so hyperglycemia, what am I talking about? So as you can see here, I have two blood vessels. This blood vessel on the left and this blood vessel on the right. Um, under normal conditions, you have uh, blood cells, and which is the red dots, and these green dots, which are glucose molecules, uh, both circulating in your blood. Now a normal blood sugar level is anywhere from 70 to 110 milligrams per deciliter. And I have that represented here. As you can see, there's an even distribution of blood and glucose molecules and everything's good. Now over on the left, when your body uh, is experiencing hyperglycemia or high sugar in the blood, um, there's a high concentration of these green dots in relation to the rest of the blood. Now one uh, cause of having hyperglycemia is insulin resistance and this often occurs with diabetes. Now what I mean by insulin resistance is um, typically when your body, when your cells make energy um, so you can do things, you have this hormone called insulin which binds to a receptor on your cell and tells uh, the cell that it can pull sugar from the blood into the cell to be used to create energy. Um, when, your insulin, when your body is insulin resistant, as it is oftentimes with diabetes, that insulin hormone is not able to bind to the receptor on your cell uh, that tells your body that you can pull sugar out from the blood into the cell. So what this results in is your blood uh, high levels of sugar circulating in your blood because the sugar cannot be pulled into the cells. Uh, now what happens, what your body does, is it has an alternate mechanism for which it can create energy. It can use chemicals other than sugar uh, or glucose to create energy. One problem with this though is that that energy production, that alternate pathway, creates ketones which are acidic, uh, acidic chemicals that can build up in your blood. And when these acidic chemicals build up, uh, they can cause a lot of the signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia and even diabetic lead to diabetic ketoacidosis, which is uh, sometimes can be a very severe complication of diabetes and something that you need to seek immediate medical help for. Now let's go on to some, what some other possible causes of hyperglycemia are. Okay, so real quick, I want to give you five other possible causes of high blood sugar aside from insulin resistance, which we just talked about. The first possible cause would be eating too much food, especially eating too much food that's high in sugar or carbohydrates. Now, this can be food such as candy, sugar, uh, white bread, white rice, simple things like that. Uh, secondly is not enough activity. So if you're not getting up enough uh, during the day, you're not getting up and moving around enough, this can lead to high blood sugar as well. Now the third is not taking enough medication. If you're a diabetic and you take um, oral medications or maybe say you're giving yourself insulin, uh, hyperglycemia could be a result of uh, you're not taking the right amount of insulin or you're not taking the right amount of oral medication which is leading to hyperglycemia. Now this is something you'd want to call your doctor about if you notice your blood sugar levels are consistently above 150. Uh, you'd want to let your primary doctor know about this um, so that they maybe can adjust your oral medications or adjust your insulin to help bring your blood sugar back down uh, to more normal levels. Now the fourth thing is being sick. Now UTIs uh, or urinary tract infections or having another infection like pneumonia, being acutely ill could cause your body to go into a state of stress which can lead to hyperglycemia. Now the fifth and final thing is stress. If you have a very stressful lifestyle, if you're under a lot of stress, this can cause a lot of changes in your body which can also result in having high blood sugar. Okay, so now that we've learned about what hyperglycemia is and what some possible causes of hyperglycemia are, I want to talk to you about some signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia. Now, hyperglycemia may sometimes go undetected. The symptoms are not always so obvious or apparent, uh, but I want to tell you about what some of those symptoms are so that you can recognize them if they're occurring and you can take action. Now, some common signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia are feeling thirsty more so than usual, uh, peeing more than you usually do, 
You might feel like your skin is itchy or dry. You may feel tired or weak. You may even feel dizzy. You may also have some nausea, which is another common symptom. Or you may be noticing that, uh, say if you have an open area or a wound on your body, you may notice that your cuts or wounds are not healing as fast as they used to, um, or they're healing very slowly. This could be another sign of having high blood sugar over a long period of time. Now, if you notice any of these symptoms, what should you do? Well, that's a good question, and I'm going to tell you some, a couple things you can do at home to help manage your hyperglycemia. Uh, now, the first thing you should do if you notice any of these symptoms is check your blood sugar using your uh, glucometer. Now, you want to check your blood sugar. Also, another thing you want to do is drink water, or uh, you can also drink caffeine-free uh, beverages. You want to make sure you don't drink anything with sugar in it. Uh, you want to make sure whatever you drink is sugar-free. Uh, the best thing to drink is water, but if you do drink something, uh, something else, make sure it's sugar-free, also caffeine-free. This will prevent your blood sugar from getting higher. Uh, now, like I said, you also want to check your blood sugar to see if it's within that normal range. Um, if it's not, if it's higher than that normal range, uh, and you are a diabetic, if you do have a sliding scale at home with your insulin, you want to compare the result that you get to your sliding scale and what you should be, uh, or how much insulin you should be taking to, uh, to help your hyperglycemia to bring your sugar back down. Uh, now another thing you can do at home is check your ketones. Not everybody has a ketone meter at home, but if you do have a ketone meter, you should also check your ketones because this can tell you what's going on in your body if your ketones are high and that possible uh, diabetic ketoacidosis that I was telling you about which can be a serious uh, acute health condition um, and I'll put the uh, normal number of uh, I'll put the normal range of ketones and things of that nature in the bottom of the screen um, if you notice that your ketones are out of range or very high uh, you'd want to call your doctor right away or seek medical uh, immediate medical attention because like I said could possibly lead to diabetic ketoacidosis now another thing I want to throw in about hyperglycemia and what to do real quick I forgot to mention is that um, if somebody is unable to drink or eat now if you if you check if you're a caregiver for somebody uh, and you check their blood sugar and it's very high and you're unable to uh, if they're unable to take in fluids or if they're unable to take in food for one reason or another uh, you should seek immediate medical help right away to help with their hyperglycemia okay guys so the final thing I want to talk with you about is uh, how to prevent high blood sugars now there are some things you can do to help better manage your blood sugar and your diabetes on a daily basis and I just want to give you some quick tips right now before we finish this video uh, the first thing you want to do to help prevent high blood sugar is to following a meal plan and uh, trying to change your diet now if you're following a diabetic meal plan uh, or a consistent carbohydrate diet it's important that you keep track of the number of carbohydrates you're eating with each meal and trying to keep that number of carbohydrates consistent uh, at each meal. This can help better regulate your blood sugar. Now the second thing you want to do uh, is also make sure you eat vegetables and protein, uh, lean proteins such as chicken, turkey, um, maybe a little bit of fish, things like these. Foods like that can really also help uh, keep your blood sugar in a much better range. Now the second thing you want to do is making sure you're getting some type of exercise every day. Even if it's just getting up and walking um, maybe to your driveway and back a few times, walking up and down a walkway, uh, or maybe taking a walking path every day somewhere in your neighborhood. Uh, these things can really help because like I said earlier, um, your cells when they use energy they're going to pull sugar out of the blood and into the cell to be used and this can put you in a much more normal range for your blood sugar. Uh, now the third thing is you want to make sure you're taking your diabetic medications, your insulin or your oral medications exactly as prescribed by your doctor. Uh, if you're on a sliding scale for insulin you want to make sure you're checking your blood sugar three to four times a day and you want to make sure you're also giving yourself the appropriate amount of insulin according to what your blood sugar is 
and your sliding scale. Uh, now the fourth thing you want to do to try to prevent high blood sugar is try to control your stress. Now high stress, like I said earlier, can cause your blood sugars to go high. Uh, you want to try to do things every day, maybe 15 to 20 minutes of relaxation or some other relaxation activities such as maybe reading or listening to music. Just things you can help to reduce your stress throughout the day. Uh, this can really do uh, a lot of great things for your blood sugar. Now the final thing you want to try to do to prevent high blood sugar is have a sick day plan. And if you, have, if you haven't heard of what a sick day plan is, um, I suggest you call, call your doctor and talk to them about it. Now sometimes what can happen when you have diabetes is if you get sick, say you have a cold or the flu, or you have an infection such as urinary tract infection, this can cause your blood sugars to go all out of whack. Um, and it's important to have a plan in place for when you do get sick uh, as far as how to control your blood sugars and what to take for medication uh, and what other things you can do. So you want to make sure you talk to your primary doctor about developing a sick day plan. Okay everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video on hyperglycemia. I tried to explain everything as best I could. I hope I didn't leave anything out. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. Also, uh, we now have a website. It is www.nursing-now.com. Uh, we're going to be posting blogs on there uh, occasionally. We're also going to be posting all of our videos that we do here on uh, Nursing Now on the website. And we also have some other things on the website as well. So please check out our website at www.nursing-now.com. And I'll see you next week on Nursing Now.